worship this morning for just a minute.
you getting ready this morning? Hopefully you're already ready. But if you're not, amen, you can be ready before you leave here this morning. Amen. Just any time, amen, the Lord can step out, amen, and call us home. Amen. I've been promised a lot of things in my life, but one thing I'm not promised, I'm not promised tomorrow. Amen. I'm not promised this afternoon. Amen. But the one thing that I do have is a hope and a knowing that, amen, that I'm his and he is mine. Amen. I heard one man say, and I've said it a lot of times to myself, if I hit the floor this morning, man, before I leave this room, before the undertaker can pick me up, the upper taker will already be come. Amen. And gathered me home. Amen. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. So we need to be ready this morning. Amen. Ready for his coming. Amen. But I believe we also, there's some things down here. Amen. We need to get ready for. Amen. God gave us some promises. Amen. And he is faithful this morning. Amen. Appreciate you being out this morning. Good to have our visitors this morning. You just get right in and worship the Lord in the house of God today. Amen. Been looking forward to in this service all week. Amen. God's been dealing with me about several different things. And I believe God's going to do some things this morning. Amen. And into our service tonight. So uh, just get in this morning and worship the Lord. Amen. We won't have any uh, men's or women's classes this afternoon. Uh, we've got a lot of people out in different places and things are going on. So. Uh, we'll go ahead with our youth class at 5, uh, but the men's and women's classes, we won't have anything this afternoon for that. We'll try to pick that up next week, and everything will be uh, kind of calmed down a little bit. Let me take just a minute to say thank you for everybody that was able to have a part in Thursday and went in down to the school. Brother Kyle said it was a tremendous success. You got to go in and minister to uh, the basketball program, the boys and the girls and the coaches. And don't know who all. And for everybody that had a part in anything to make that happen, and we want to say thank you. Amen. As God is opening doors for us to go in and minister, we want to step through those doors. And we appreciate them for doing that. But Kyle went in and done a uh, message for them Amen. on Thursday. Amen. We appreciate their faithfulness. If you can help us in the nursery uh, for the month of January, there's a sign-up sheet on the back back there. Uh, if you'd like to sign up for a Sunday uh, morning or a Wednesday night, amen, we could use your help in that area. So sign up on the bulletin board back there by uh, the men's restroom. Amen. Tonight, we're going to do our best if we get enough here. Uh, one way or another, we got to get this settled down. Uh, to get our sign finalized. We've kind of done some adjustments to it. But Jimmy's got that taken care of. They sent us back another draft. So tonight we're going to have that up there uh, and try to get this nailed down so we can get this done. Amen. This has been a long process. So we need to get this uh, taken care of. Amen. While they have come back and given us a really good price, they have stepped in and helped us a lot. So we want to get this nailed down and locked in before uh, anything changes. New year things change. Amen. Materials change. So we want to get this done very quickly. Also tonight we're going to start a new series. I'm going to be preaching for the next several weeks uh, on the subject of the spiritual church. A couple of uh, Sunday nights ago uh, went through from 1 Corinthians chapter uh, number 11 and 12 uh, about different things and then the spiritual gifts and Amen. I believe God's moving us into some ministry opportunities, and we need to be prepared, amen, when we get to that place. So come back tonight and be a, a part of that. So remember uh, these announcements. And then both of come on and receive our, our morning offering this morning, tithes and offering today. Amen. Amen. Brother Rich, would you pray over our offering this morning? Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give to you to give to the maintenance of the church and we just pray that your blessings that you cause us to fulfill the desire that you have for this place, for this house, that we would understand your calling and, and give you glory and, and accomplish what you desire in this place. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Worship as you give this morning. Amen. Worship with 
praise team for you a few more minutes.
That there's a place that you get to that only He can do. There's things, but Aaron, that only He can do. There's a comfort that only His presence and His Spirit and His being a part of your life can bring. And it's not that He owes me anything, because because of who I am, He didn't owe me one thing. He didn't owe me salvation. He didn't owe me a second chance and a third chance and a fourth and a fifth and a sixth. But because he loved me and because of who he is, amen, he gave me all of those things anyway. And I'm here to tell you this morning, whatever you need in your life today, he's still God and he's still faithful. And he's still there to give you. You are in his presence. I came in this morning early before anybody else was here and I was walking back and forth across the, the front of the building just praying and I could feel even when I walked in this morning the presence of the Lord here. Amen. That's his promise to us when we come together that he will meet us and he will minister to us. So you get in this morning. Amen. And you get what you need from the Lord. Give this praise to him a hand this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We were missing some. Amen. But of course, slid over on another place. But he, uh, Brother Bryce came in and helped us this morning. Amen. We appreciate that today. Amen. All our kids can go with Sister Lindsay to Children's Church this morning. Amen. Say again, it's good to have you in the house of the Lord this morning. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 7. I'm going to preach to you this morning for just a few minutes. One little simple scripture that God has dealt with me about this week. 
We were praying in the altars Wednesday night. God impressed me with this scripture then. And I just couldn't get it out of my mind all week long. Just one little small verse. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 7. Just simply says, casting all your care upon him. For he careth for you. Man, what a simple little few words. Casting all your care upon him. You know, a lot of times we look at that and we think, or we've heard, and I've heard it quoted all my life, casting all your cares with an S on the end of that care, but it's not, that's singular. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Man, I want to talk to you for just a few minutes on the subject of just throw it away. And just, just throw it away. You look at this passage of scripture, there's a lot of different things that, that uh, uh, the writer is writing about in, in these few verses. But a lot of you will find in the book of 1 Peter and, and, and even in the 2 Peter where he is dealing a lot with Christian conduct and, and, and how that Christians are to conduct themselves and how Christians are, are to act or how we are to walk. And, and, and this is what we find in chapter number five. And even back into chapter four, he is encouraging Christians in a lot of different things. And, and in verse number five of that same passage, he says, Likewise, the younger, submit yourselves unto the elders. Yea, all of you be subject to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resist us the proud and give us grace to the humble. And he says, Humble yourself, and therefore in the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Skip to verse 8. He said, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, who resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Those four verses that I read to you, two above and two below, Seem like that they are written on a totally different scale or a totally different level that you find verse 7 right in the middle of all of that. Uh, he's giving Christian commands and he's giving uh, uh, commands of how to walk uh, and how to act. But in the middle of all of those things, uh, he said, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. Uh, that word casting in that passage of scripture right there says, simply means this, uh, to throw upon or to throw something away. Uh, amen. To cast your care uh, upon him. We were in the altar Wednesday night and God began to, to, to deal with me about that scripture and it was like he just opened uh, 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 my spiritual vision uh, for a few minutes. A lot of times when we think about the cares uh, of this life and casting them uh, upon the Lord, we think about coming to an altar. Uh, amen and laying them down and gently leaving them, amen, at the feet of Jesus. But that's not the picture that you see in this passage of Scripture. Amen. That word casting is a verb. That word casting, amen, is an action. It does not mean to come at a slow pace. It does not mean to come, amen, and to lay anything down. It means to throw something away as an action to throw it away violently. Have you ever had something in your life that you've dealt with for so long and you've gotten so tired of battling the same thing every day and you've gotten so weary from fighting the same battle every day and you said to yourself I just can't carry this thing <laughs> excuse me I just can't carry this thing anymore. I just can't deal with this anymore. And you get to a place that you are physically exhausted and mentally exhausted and spiritually exhausted and you're wondering what are you going to do and how are you going to make it. Sometimes we get so fed up and so tired with the problems of life that it seems like that we get over one thing and something else happens. 
happens. And it seems like we get a little better in the financial area and the health comes. And we get over the health and this happens. And we get past that and something else happens. Have you ever just gotten so tired and so weary and so aggravated and exhausted with life that you just didn't know if it was worth going on one more day? Have you ever got to the place that you were just so tired of getting up every morning and fighting the same battles that you fought yesterday? Have you ever gotten to the place, Brother Rich, where they just didn't seem if it was worth going on one more day or one more mile? Well, let me tell you this morning, there is a place that you can get rid of all of those problems. There is a place that you can get rid of all your cares and Jesus is saying if you're tired and if you're weary and if you're frustrated and you're aggravated, why don't you just throw those things away and give them to me? Throw them away. Just throw them away. Did you ever? Some of you may not be like me. I'm not a mechanic. I hate the mechanic. But if you own a truck, you're going to become a mechanic at some time. If you own any kind of equipment, you're going, well, Kyle said he's trying to rebuild, amen, a motor at his house, and he got it done, and it just wasn't right, and he said he got so tired of it, he just had to walk away. Anybody ever done something like that? Just got so tired and frustrated, amen, I've had wrenches in my hand trying to tighten up a bolt in a tight place, and that wrench slid, and you bust your knuckles and bust your hands, amen, I find myself at times, amen, so uh, aggravated and frustrated. Uh, amen. The rich didn't do nothing wrong. Uh, amen. The rich was trying to do its job. Uh, but Brother Corey just take it and throw it. Uh, amen. Uh, my, my, my oldest boy, uh, bless his heart, and my brother. Uh, amen. Sometimes, uh, amen, things don't go just right. Uh, amen. They just take it and throw it. Uh, amen. As far as they could. Uh, I saw him standing on the bank. Uh, amen. Of a pond one day. Uh, and he threw a brand new fishing rod. $130 real uh, threw that thing out there uh, and it backlashed the first time uh, and he stood there about 30 minutes uh, trying to pull that line. Uh, anybody ever done that before? Uh, amen. Trying to get it out. Uh, all of a sudden he said nope uh, not today uh, and just threw the whole thing. Uh, brand new real. Uh, only been cast one time. Uh, he said you won't bother me no more. Uh, I won't ever have to fool with you again. Uh, sometimes in life uh, we get to places like that uh, that it seems like Amen. We just can't go anymore or do anymore. Amen. Why don't you just throw those things away? There are things in your life, and I may not get very far this morning, but there are things that we battle every day. Amen. That we battle with far too long. Amen. We battle for them for longer than we should have. We wrestle with those things longer than we ought to. But all we have to do, amen, is just throw them away. Amen. You don't need them. You don't want them. Amen. You don't have to have them. So why don't you just throw those things away? And I'll come back to that in a few minutes. He said, casting all your care upon him. Casting all your care. I looked at that last night and I almost read over that little word. But the Lord just carried me right back to that. We think about that little word, A-L-L. -L. Everybody know what all means, right? Amen. Casting all your care. It means every. It means any. What? It means everything. Anything. Whatsoever that you have. Or it also means whosoever you have. Amen. Anybody ever had anybody that's kind of a thorn in your flesh? Amen. People that's hurt you. And people that's done you wrong. Yeah, you got quiet on me now. I ain't the only one ever been hurt in church. Amen. You've been done wrong on your job. You've been done wrong in church. Your wife's hurt you. Your husband's hurt you. Your children's hurt you. Uh, amen. Problems of life come in every category. Uh, amen. It's not always a what. Sometimes it's a who. Amen. Sometimes it's a who. 
But all together, and I said all that to say this, that word A-L-L -L right there when he said casting all your cares upon him, it means to cast the whole thing. It means a whole. So if I'm going to cast all upon him, that means I can't pick and choose what I do. That doesn't mean that I can give him this and I'm going to deal with this on my own. That's the problem a lot of times in life. We want God to handle the big things, but the little things, oh, I can deal with that on my own. I can handle this, but God, you take care of that. Amen, God. I want you to take care of this, but I want to hang on to this over here because I like this. Amen. This is what I like to do. So I want to hang on to that. And we're struggling and we're battling and we can't get victory. Amen. We're living a defeated life. Amen. And God is saying, why don't you just cast uh, all your care upon me? Uh, amen. God's not wanting part of you today. Uh, God's not wanting uh, half of you today. Uh, what God is wanting from you today uh, is for you to give him everything uh, that you are. Uh, he's wanting you to give him everything uh, that you have. Uh, he wants you to give him uh, the problems. Uh, he wants you to give him the bad things. Uh, he wants you to give him the good things. Uh, he wants you to give him the, your marriage, uh, your job, your children. Uh, amen. Everything that you have, God is saying, why don't you just throw it all to me today? Just throw it all. We don't need, I'm going to say this again. I don't need to pick and choose what I let God help me with. Man, I don't know about you, but there have been things that I thought I could handle on my own because it was something small. And the next thing I know, something small wasn't so small no more. Amen. Oh, it was just, it was just, Sister Heather ain't in here. It was just one little argument with Sister Heather. It didn't matter. Our Sunday school lesson was on marriage this morning. Amen. Amen. Sister Laura said her and Brother Rich had been married 57, Brother Rich said 58. 58 years. I thought, Hallelujah. Amen. 58 years. Amen. Man, Sister Wendy made 30. Amen. And she told them in Sunday school, they won't be no more. One was enough. Amen. Amen. She said, I learned the first time. One was enough. Amen. One little, one little disagreement becomes two. And that little disagreement becomes anger. And anger becomes malice. Then there becomes a division. And then there becomes a separation. And I'm just going to go down through. The Bible does not go. I mean to go, go this way. This is, it means get your son. You want to come up and finish your son? <laughs> Amen. The Bible says that sin is a process. Sin doesn't happen all of a sudden. Amen, a man, amen, sin, amen, when there's lust, and lust comes to this, and this leads to James chapter 5, lays out that sin is a process. So if I don't give God everything that I have, and I'm going to fix part of it myself, and that one little argument becomes two, and then you become to get angry, and then there comes that division in your home, then there comes that division in your marriage, and you're still angry, amen, and, and all these things are happening, amen, and somebody walks by and catches your eye and says, well, I'd never treat you like that, amen, and then there comes temptation, and somebody looking at me like I lost my mind this morning. Then temptation comes in. Amen. And then there comes another set of problems that you have. And, and, and temptation leads to, to something else. Amen. And then you find yourself in a place you got to make a decision. Am I going to give in to sin? Or am I going to turn and walk away? And it all started with one little thing that happened in your home a long time ago. Because you said, I'll handle this one on my own. But God is saying, you don't need to handle anything in your life. I didn't call you to handle your problems. I called you to serve me. I called you to work for me. And I'll take care of all of those other things. Cast all your care upon me. Give him everything. Remember the little saying I told you, Miss Linda, got on the refrigerator. It said, good morning. This is God. I'll be handling all your problems today. 
and I will not need your help. So have a good day. Signed, your heavenly father. I'll be handling all your problems. God said casting, he said casting all your care, all your care. Now I looked at this and when I made that statement Wednesday night that I was talking about problem care of this life and that and that is somewhat this what the scripture is talking about. But I really dug into that. And when he said casting all your care upon him, it does mean concern. It means to have a concern for something or someone. It, it means to have a, a desire to see something changed. But the real core meaning of what that means, the idea whenever he wrote casting your care upon him is the idea of a distraction. Of a distraction. You ever wondered why there's something different every day? Because the devil is trying to distract you. Man, he's trying to distract you. He's trying to get your mind off of what you really need to be focused on. The reason we need to give God everything is because we don't have time or room to be distracted. Amen. We don't have time or we don't have room to be distracted. There are enough problems, enough temptations, there are enough situations in life that you deal with every day that you have to deal with to let things happen in your life that come in just to distract you. You know what he's trying to do? He gets your mind off of God. He gets your mind off of your mission. He gets your mind off of your ministry. If he gets your mind off of your family, he gets your mind onto all of these other things, then you will never be successful at anything. But God, if you're going to weld up somebody's exhaust, you better pay attention to what you do. Amen? I left... It was the day before yesterday, I went somewhere in Wendy's vehicle. And I was coming out of pedal. And I had my phone in my hand. Didn't have no business with it. But I had my phone. Uh, I left the hospital is what it was. And I was sending her a message. And I was going through pedal. And I sent her a message. And there was a message come back. And, and I picked it up to read that. And guess what? I got distracted. And the next thing I knew, her little car is a lot smarter than I am a good driver. Because all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I heard, I heard something go beep, beep, and my chest hit the steering wheel. Because the brakes locked up. Because there was a vehicle in front of me that stopped that I didn't see because I was distracted. I was looking at something I had no business looking I was paying attention to something that I had no business paying attention to. And thank God that there was a safety device in that car that shut it down when I wasn't even paying attention. Amen. And I don't know why I almost hit that car. Because I, amen. It just fit right perfectly in here this morning. How many times in life do you get caught looking at what you ain't supposed to be looking at and doing what you're not supposed to be doing huh? and wandering over here and got your eyes over here and, and you're focused on the wrong thing. Huh? Amen. It's not huh, really the problem. Huh? Listen to me very carefully. Huh? It's not really the problem that you're dealing with. Huh? The devil didn't really bring that problem into your life. Huh? Amen. For any other reason than to distract you. Amen. The Bible said <laughs> Jesus said I supply all your need according to my riches and glory anyway. I mean we've got the promise brother Eric that he's going to take care of us anyway. So why do we spend as much time as we do worried about what's going to happen and how he's going to take care of us? Says the child of God, you got that promise. He's going to take care of you and your family. 
So that shouldn't be a, 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 a real concern. And the devil knows whether you trust God or not. And he knows that if you do trust God, then he's got to find some other way to get to you. So what does he do? There's a care that comes in your life that causes a distraction. Amen? It causes a distraction. He just wants to get your eyes where they don't belong and your mind where it don't belong. Casting all your care upon him. All your distractions. All your problems. All your situations. Casting all your care upon him. For he careth for you. That is a verb. And there's a whole lot more I could say right there. That word care in this passage of scripture is a verb. It means to be of interest. That is to be of a concern. This is the only place in the scripture that you will find that this word is used in the tense in which it is written in this passage of scripture. It is used in the third person presentive indicative term. It is it is saying that this is a personal thing. It is the third person, amen, present tense of this word. And it simply means, amen, that it matters. It means that it matters. In other words, throw everything, all your distraction, all your problems on him because it matters to him. It matters. Nobody cares. Nobody loves me. I'm all of No, you're not. You're not all of But he loves you. It matters to him. I've used this several times. Bo and them used to sing a song. Amen. And the title of it is, If it matters to you, it matters to the master. He careth for you. It is present tense. That means right now, you matter to him. Right now, you matter to him. The only, you'll find, and I, I, I didn't write it down, but I, I, I forgot how many hundred times in the Bible the word care and careth and carest is used in the scripture. And nowhere else is it meant like it is in this passage of scripture. Nowhere else. He's telling you, bring it to me now because I care about you now. Cast all your care upon him because he careth for you. What, of the, what happens? Go back with me one chapter to 1 Peter chapter number 4. 1 Peter chapter no, number 4. Sometimes things happen in our life and, and, and we wonder amen, why these things happen and, and, and we get so all out of sorts and, and we think, God, why me? Why this happening to me? Anybody ever ask that question? God, why me? Lord, why is this happening? Why, why can't I? I'll go ahead and make a little confession. My wife's smiling. Amen. I went in this week one evening and I just had me a good old meltdown. I said, I don't understand why when I'm trying to do everything I know to do, the best that I can, I'm trying to do the best I can for the church, I'm trying to do the best I can for my business, I'm trying to do everything that I know, and everything seems to just fall apart. Everything's falling apart. She never said a word. Amen. That's unusual, but she never said a word. She's usually pretty quick to set me straight. But you know what? I guess she figured that I just needed to get some stuff off my chest. I, I, I said, I just don't understand. <laughs> Amen. My phone had rang 40-something times that day. And there were situations on every hand. Amen. Things that I thought was taken care of. Somebody called and, 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 and this bill collector. And this happening over here. And this happening here. And the IRS on one side. And, and, and let me go ahead and throw this out. Don't ever think you got them satisfied. Amen. Don't ever think the IRS is ever going to be satisfied. Because they're not. 
Amen. We spent everything we had a few months ago paying them off. And had our taxes, everything was good. I thought, whoo, I got that taken care of. We got a letter in the mail the other day, you owe me $2,972. And I said, what in the world do I owe that for? So we called the accountant. And she said, you got to pay back that stimulus check that you got. And I said, I, I didn't get a stimulus check. I owed them way more money than my stimulus check would be. So I didn't get a stimulus check. So we made a phone call. And the government said, oh yeah, everybody got one. You ain't got your letter yet, watch your mailbox. Everybody got one. Said, I didn't get a stimulus check. And they said, oh, don't worry, you owe it anyway. And I said, how did I owe for something that I didn't get? And they said, can you prove you didn't get it? I said, no, I reckon so. Well, you're going to pay us anyway. Wow. Amen. I just take with the fire out of me. <laughs> can, can you prove you didn't get it? You owe me anyway. <laughs> Tell me this to why when we're trying everything but we know, and I, pro I, I will be probably say I'm not the only one in this room that's made that same statement. I'm trying to do everything right that I can. I'm trying to do the best that I can. Trying to do the best by everybody. And it seems like it's always just falling apart. Then some of you shaking your head. Just don't seem fair. I told old guy that one time in church. And he said, you're looking for fair? And I said, live? Well, he said, fair is where you get high candy, son. <laughs> Amen. I said, thank you, too. Thank you for those encouraging words. Amen. Life ain't, life ain't always fair. Sometimes things, uh, the very best that you can think that you can do. <laughs> And then I get ready to preach this week after my meltdown, and God takes me to this scripture, and it felt like he was just raking me. <laughs> Praise the Lord, got up, got up to preach, and you, and you study, and you feel like the, the whole time God just whipping you across the back. Think it, beloved. Beloved. He ain't just talking to anybody. Man, he, he ain't talking to the, the stranger out on the street. He's talking to the church. He's talking to the Christians in the church. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Fiery trial. That means something that is smelting, something that is burning, something that is hot. What's he trying to do? He's trying to make it as hot as he can and as hard as he can to distract you away from what you're supposed to be doing, from the mission that God has designed for you to do. And the more distracted you become, the more problems that you're going to have. And we get so wrapped up in why me? Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as some strange thing has happened unto you. And this is where I got my whooping. <coughs> Be happy. Uh huh. Be happy. What? When everything's falling apart and life is hard and, and everything around me is crashing. <coughs> but rejoice. Hmm. That's a mouthful. But Ross, that ain't easy. Just have that, that ain't easy. When everything you try to do the very best you can never seems to be enough. Have you ever felt that way? Oh, God. I just don't feel like I'm enough. I don't feel like I measure up. I 
don't feel like I'm good for any because the more I try, the more that it falls apart. That is a trick of the devil. That is the, a trick of the enemy. He's trying to distract you away because you, I don't care who you are, where you've been, what you've been through, how bad you've been, how good you might have been. God does not care about where you held in. God does not care about who you used to be. God cares about who you are today. And God loves you today. And God will accept you today. And God will change you today. And God is saying today, just throw it to me. Just throw it to me. Just get it out of your life. Catch all those distractions. All those problems. All those tears. All of those burning places in your life. Amen. That you don't feel. Just give it to me. Oh, but, but, but rejoice. In so much as you are partakers in Christ's sufferings. Then I began to think about that. And then I went from feeling like I was getting a whipping to feeling like I ought to be ashamed of myself. I may not be preaching to you this morning. I may be preaching to myself under conviction. I began to think about another place to what he went through. His sufferings. But Ross said, ain't nobody tied me to a post and took a, a rope and put glass pieces in it and metal fragments and, and put it and raked my back uh, uh, until I was the blood just ran. No, nobody took a crown of thorns and, and put on my head and smashed it down until the blood ran all around. Nobody put a cross on my back and made me drag. Nobody nailed nails through my hands. Amen. But you know what? Well, we need to realize we're not alone. When you're suffering, when you're going through problems and, and, and you're going through all these situations, uh, you're not alone. You're not the first one and you won't be the last one. Uh, and then Jesus went through. He said, but rejoice uh, as you are partakers in Christ's sufferings. Uh, listen to the rest of it. Uh, why should we rejoice? Uh, because sooner or later, uh, there's going to come an end. Uh, sooner or later, there's going to come uh, a time when there's going to be a deliverance uh, for <laughs> when his glory that shall be revealed you may be glad also with uh, exceeding joy uh, when you go through that fiery trial uh, amen, and you make it out uh, on the other side uh, or you walk up to this altar this morning uh, and you throw it over to Jesus uh, and say God you take it uh, because I can't handle it anymore uh, there will be uh, a moment uh, amen, that the glory of God uh, will be revealed uh, in you uh, and why are we tested? Amen. It ain't that God sees where I'm at, but it's where I can see where I stand. And when I come out on the other side and I realize that it wasn't me that made it through that trial. It wasn't my strength that helped me every day, but it was the power and the strength of God that undergirded me. I will realize that the glory of God has been on my life the whole time. Man, Isaiah said, the Lord carried him down. What did Isaiah or Jeremiah to the potter's wheel? To which one? Jeremiah said, God carried me down to the potter's house. And the potter wrought a work on his wheel. And he said he stood there and he watched as the potter made that into a vessel. And all of a sudden, the vessel had a flaw in it. And the potter didn't just stop and pick out the flaw. The potter stopped, picked out the flaw, mashed it all up, Brother Rich, put it back on the wheel, and begin to mold it and make it again. I said that to say this. 
You may feel like that you're on the potter's wheel this morning. You may feel like you are in the sufferings. You may feel like uh, that you are going through the battle and the hard times. You may feel like uh, that God is working on you. But it does not matter, uh, amen, how long. Listen to me very carefully. Uh, as long as you're on the potter's wheel, always remember this. The potter never leaves a vessel working on the wheel that he doesn't have his hand on the vessel. Amen. He, if the potter leaves his hands to stand on that, that wheel is spinning so fast. What's keeping it on there and what's molding it and shaping it is where the potter's hands are. When the potter removes his hand, the vessel flies off the wheel. What's holding the vessel on the potter's wheel is the potter's hands. And it does not matter how long his hands are on you, as long as his hands are on you. As long as he's working on you, that means he's still touching you. He's still working on your life. As long as he's still moving in your life, that means his hands are still on you. But rejoice in so much as you're protectors of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may also be, be glad with exceeding joy. Go on to the next one. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. For the Spirit of the Lord and of God resteth upon you. How am I going to make it, preacher? How am I going to make it through this trial? Remember, remember, remember. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, for the Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On the part of he is evil spoken of, but not on your part. He is well. As long as you're in that battle, as long as you're in that place, amen, his spirit and his power and his glory resteth upon you. Don't think it's strange when these things happen. Psalms 34 and 19. And I'm fixing the quote. Psalms 34 and 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth them out of them. Huh? All. Out of them all. Same word that you find in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. The Lord delivereth them out of them all. So many are the afflictions. That word affliction has a lot of, it means adversities. Anybody have right now had any adversities in your life? Calamities. Yeah. Anything just fell apart and you get just broke off. All distresses. Many are the distresses of the righteous. But Ross, you've been distressed lately? You've been courting me? You've been in some distressed places lately. Many are the distresses, griefs, grief. Many are the griefs of the righteous, hurts, heaviness. All those three go together, grief and hurt and heaviness. They're coming in life. They're coming in life. Many are these things. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the griefs. Many are the hurts in life. If you live, you're going to hurt. Amen. Physically, spiritually, you're going to have situations. And then Jesus said in, in, in the book of Matthew, in this world you will have trouble. <laughs> in this world you will have trouble. But take heart. For as I have overcome, so shall you also overcome. Many are the afflictions, illnesses. Illnesses. We're going to have sicknesses. Some seem fair. Some don't. Amen. Why God does some of the things he does, I don't understand. Why some are healed and some are not, I don't understand. Why some have this and some have that, I don't understand. How some families are, 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 are deal with these kind of things, amen, more than others, I don't understand. What we do understand is that illnesses are part of life. It's part of life. Misery. 
the last thing, the biggest word, there's a list of definitions to that word afflictions, but the last one means abundant misery. Misery. He said, well, I didn't come to hear all this sad stuff this morning. Amen. I didn't come to tell you about the sad stuff. I come to tell you about one that'll help you through the sad stuff. Amen. I come to tell you about one that said, if you just throw it to me, you won't have to worry about it. Because I'll take misery. The moment been through sickness. Lately, but Rich went through heart trouble and, and, and just dying. And, and you look around the room this morning, and we all got our stories. I promise you. We've all. Is there anybody in here that ain't had trouble? Huh? Anybody in here that ain't had some days of misery? If you hadn't, then I want to meet you on the porch and you tell me what you're doing different than I am. There are times in life when the college just going to get married. But there are some times it's miserable. Sometimes life is hard. Some, I preached a message at Avery years ago, and my mama reminds me of this all the time, and I titled it, Sometimes Bad Things Happen to Good People. Is. That's just the reality of life. But it's hard. I'm lost. It's hard. So it's hard to look at God and not say why. But He said, Make it not strange concerning these things that come to tempt you. Man, they're coming because the, the devil, he's trying. He's trying to distract. He's trying to pull you away from your mission, your call. He's trying to drag you away from your prayer life. He's trying to split you up from your family. He's trying to do anything he can to make life more miserable for you. But Jesus said, just throw them all to me. Just throw all of them distractions. Throw all of them afflictions. And I forgot all about it. I really run out of time this morning to get stuff ready for, for, for tonight. But, but, but I was going to go through and make just a whole list of words on a piece of paper. If you got sickness, wad them up, throw them on the altar. If you got family problems, wad it up, throw it on the altar. If you got financial problems, just wad it up and throw it to Jesus. Your life is a mess. Just wad it up and throw it to Jesus and say, you take this. I can't deal with it. I can't handle it. Why? Because he said he cares for you. It matters to him. It matters to him. You matter to him this morning. Where you are right now matters to him. What you're dealing with right now matters to him. And he's wanting you to just throw it to him. But not just that problem, Brother Kyle. He, he's not just wanting to help you with what you dealt with yesterday. He's wanting you to give it A-L-L. -L. All. 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 I seen a thing the other day and I seen it in the window. She didn't think it was too funny, but I did. said the preacher asked to bring all your problems to the altar. He threw his wife on his shoulder and started up the aisle. Amen. Norman, when he sent me a message back, said the only problem is you can't get me on your shoulder. I got some of you back now. Well, Norman, when, when he had that woman on his shoulder at the altar, he didn't leave her head back there. He didn't leave her arm and her legs. He had a whole, he had all of her. <laughs> he was running down the aisle. And I can just see him casting her. <laughs> 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 
Christ just throw it out there and say, God, you fix her. What Brother Lee said when he was, Brother Lee walked across here, he said he looked up and said, God, you fix that woman. I can't. And he said, God looked back at him and said, I'm going to fix you. He said, God, I ain't your problem. God said, oh, well, yeah, you are. Cast all. Don't leave part of it this morning. Don't take part of it back home. God said, throw it all up here. Come on. Leave it all up here. You don't need it. You ain't got room for it. What you mean, Brother Barry? I ain't got room for it. Because there's things God wants to put in you and do through you that he can't put in you and do through you until you get some of that stuff out. Just plain and simple. You got to make room for it. <laughs> Make, make room for it. I've been going to preach a message on that little room that that widow woman made for Elijah. For Elijah. You know what? She said, when he's coming by here, he ain't staying at nobody else's house. Because I'm going to put a room up there for him. For he is a man of God. you got to make room for it. You don't have room for no junk. You don't have time for no junk in life. And let me go ahead and throw this out there too and I'm going to give an altar call. The time is too short to be dealing with junk. Amen. But Ross, we got too much to do as a church to be sitting here wrestling with these same old stuff that we already got rid of a long time ago. But Kyle, I got too much to do to sit around throwing fits and complaining because everything didn't go my way one day. That was some time I could have been praying. Huh? That was some time I may have could have used that phone. Amen. That phone call that just pushed me over the edge. I could have picked it up and called somebody and told them Jesus loved me. I missed it because I got so tied up. Got distracted. Got distracted. So that is trying to distract you and pull you away. Every head bowed, every eye closed this morning. I wonder where are you? Where are you this morning? What's going on in your life? Maybe you got problems. Maybe you got circumstances. Maybe, maybe, maybe you got hurts. Maybe you got adversities. Maybe you got illnesses. Maybe you Maybe life is just miserable. Hey, God did not call you to live. God did not intend for you to live in a life of misery. God said in my, I give you that scripture earlier, in his presence there is fullness of joy. There's peace. And there's happiness. And brother, it don't look like there's happiness today. You know what? You don't know what tomorrow holds. Amen. I promise you in this room this morning there's not a one of you from the front to the back, from the left to the right that God does not have a plan for your life and does not know where you are and what you need. Amen. And can do things for you and through you that you never imagined. You just got to get the distractions out of the way. What about it? Would there be one? Stand with me all over the building if you will. Would there be one this morning, every head bowed, every eye closed as you're standing, would you like to just come and find a place to pray? Brother Perry, I've been in a battle. I've been in 